My name's Alex Barham, and the Scorch is the best boat Piranha has ever made. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. I think that this is easily the best boat that Piranha has ever made for the broad spectrum application of needing a creek boat or a river runner. It's just that simple. It's that good. So let's just jump backwards and get back to that statement. You look at this boat, the first thing you're going to see is that bow. The bow is hyper aggressive in the Scorch. It just has a ton of rocker. It maintains volume up there. The chine lines are starting all the way up at the front. This boat is designed to jump on top of stuff and it does that really well. Coming back towards the paddler, you get into a beautiful, huge, wide planing hull with hard chines on the sides, hard walls going up the, the sides of the boat. This continues past the paddler to where there is a kick rocker, so a sharp angle where the stern starts going up aggressively, and this goes down to a flat, wide, just planing hulled out stern. What's really nice about this boat versus the original 9R, which I think people are gonna be tempted to compare to, is the 9R has had much more banana, whereas the Scorch has three distinct segments to it. However, a lot like that original 9R, it has a really continuous profile in the chines and in the planing hull. That means that this boat, when it's up to speed, is always doing its job. It can be instantly given input to do whatever you need it to do. Jump into an eddy, boof, make a slight adjustment. It just has this continuity in the way that it paddles and it all comes back to this continuity in the planing hull and in the chines. Does a really, really nice job through that in giving the paddler a really confident and stable feel at speed, at speed. So the problem is, if you are someone that is going to creep up on stuff, that's just you, you just don't take strokes going into stuff, it's gonna bite you. Uh, this boat can just as easily not give an input, get grabbed in the chine, and go totally cattywampus. By comparison, if you just come in giving it everything you got and hope for the best, take a boof for freedom, you're probably gonna land fine every single time and punch through whatever's on the backside. So with that all said, river running in this boat is absolutely sublime. You just keep the boat at 50% to 80% speed, give it the little bits of input in your knees and hips that you want to, and it will seamlessly move around, carve, cut lines, and just do its job. It's absolutely a pleasure to river on the Scorch. And the only way that you're really gonna get yourself in trouble is by going into quite large boily features without giving it a clear plan of what you need it to do. Once you give this boat over to big boils, it is gonna be a pretty big pain to get it back. Otherwise though, it is just wonderful how this thing will stay high and dry, boof over stuff, and you can really feel the way that the bow and the kick rocker in the stern work together, that when the bow comes up, the stern has somewhere to go. It's allowed to dip because of that cut, and the boat can just keep jumping up on top of stuff. The other thing that I was told by uh, you know, the team was that one of the main objectives they wanted in this boat was they really wanted to be able to do what I would call the annual skip, which is when you're coming straight down on a feature and you've got a diagonal over onto your side that you can just load up and throw the boat 45 degrees to perfectly hit that uh, diagonal and then skip out back straight again. That move is super cool, super fun, highly effective, and it is something that the Scorch really does very well. The 9R2 really didn't bring to the table. All right, so it does big volume, it does low gradient. Can it run the mank? Yeah, this boat actually can do pretty good in the mank. Uh, I took it into Stone Valley, which is one of my 
favorite runs up here. It's just an iconic release. And it made it so easy. It stayed so high and dry. So healthy volume, high gradient, this boat will absolutely crush. Where it's going to fall a little flat in creaking is going to be where you have to start worrying about tail tapping. Yes, you can definitely tail tap this boat and because there are hard edges back there, there is a degree of unpredictability that you just wouldn't have with a displacement style stern. So if you would look at this compared to like the Machno, the Machno when it stern taps, it's much more predictable because it's going to just roll off of whatever was on there like a cue ball. By comparison, on the Scorch, you are gonna have those chines and edges engaging and disengaging, which can lead to unpredictable things happening or things that are predictable happening in a more extreme way. Overall fit and finish of this boat is also just fantastic. It is beautiful to look at. The form of it going through the water is just something to see the way that it is just riding over everything. The ergonomics are, I think the best Piranha has done in a really long time, if not ever. This boat is comfortable. The knee positioning is great. Um, this boat just has a level of polish to it that is super high and it's just high quality. It is absolutely fantastic. 2021 has just been a year of great boats and the Scorch is right up there with it. But what I would say about this boat is that it is definitely not a burn. I happen to have, I think it was a burn two, so not a burn three. I put it next to a burn and you can just see there's nowhere near the same amount of rocker. There's nowhere near the same aggressiveness in the chine or just anything about the body. And the volume's very different. So what do I not think it is? It's, I don't think it's a beginner boat. There really has been a huge change in how fast beginners are able to get up to class three and four at just because of how much better boats have gotten. But like I said, this boat's really not gonna tolerate you feeling things out or being unsure. It wants to go into things with speed and gusto and just blow out the back end. You know, not every beginner is just gonna fake it until they make it. Otherwise though, this is one of those boats that just raises the bar in the same way that the Antics 2 last year just raised the bar. This Scorch does too. This thing is really damn good. Part of the reason it's just taken a long time to put a review out is because it, there's just only so many ways that you can say this boat's really damn good. I don't know how else to do it. I really just feel like this boat has a level of synergy, balance, proportionality, that everything works together like gears in a clock. You can just feel the different parts doing their jobs simultaneously and seamlessly. When the bow needs to go up, the kick rocker in the stern is letting it go. When the chines engage, you can feel the whole boat pulling into that turn with the beginnings and end of the rocker profile engaging into those turns with the rest of the chine. If it wasn't for the stern tapping in low water, this boat would just be over the top. But it does have a limitation and there's no such thing as perfect. Now, I think the one real issue that people are gonna have with the Scorch is the sizing. The difference in the sizing in the medium and the large is enormous. It just paddles like two different boats. If you're a little heavy for the medium, it's gonna paddle with the chines fully engaged and the boat kind of feels swamped. It really just takes all of the performance out and you're fighting with it to do its job, it's, it's not fun anymore. But the large can be huge. Uh, 
I really feel for the challenges of trying to make a design work for all bodies in three or maybe even just two sizes. But yeah, I just felt like I was so solidly between the two sizes of these boats that it was unfortunate. And a lot of the conversations I've had with people who have paddled this boat had the exact same problem. They were just right between a medium and a large and stuck in that place where you know there's something so much better, but it just doesn't exist. So unfortunately, the downfall for this boat is gonna be that when you make something that is super high performance and you don't nerf it down, not everyone is actually gonna get that performance because it's not tailor made for you like a suit the way that a slalom boat is or a custom play boat or a custom squirt boat is. You just have to leave something on the table because you can't float it perfectly. I feel like everyone now talks about how this, that, and the other thing is fast. And fast is such a relative word, but seriously, this thing's really fast. I've been paddling this and a Zet Chili, which is known right now to be the quickest of the half slices. And this is quicker than the Chili, at least the large, because I'm so light in it. And it absolutely can do things before you're ready to be there. Meaning it can be faster than your reflexes or your innate timing that you've learned from other boats. So there was much more of a learning curve and I would say a crashing curve uh, in some cases, but yeah, this thing's super quick. So yeah, that's the Scorch. I don't think I said anything groundbreaking but I mean it sincerely. If there's only good to say about it, it doesn't really make an interesting review, but this is that boat. I've had a number of questions uh, how this is gonna compare to the other Piranha boats. I'm gonna cover that in a different video because I think this has gone long enough, but hope you enjoyed. Hit like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, if you want to support me in a more direct way, there's going to be a link down in the description of this video to a Amazon affiliate store. Go through there when you do your Amazon shopping and a couple cents will make its way back to me to support new camera gear and all of that jazz. See you on the next one. Thanks.